like when, when things are on an exponential, at, at an exponential rate of improvement, it's, it's, it's very difficult to kind of wrap one's mind around it because we're used to extrapolating on a linear basis. But when you've got massive amounts of, uh, of like as the hardware, uh, you have massive amounts of hardware on the road, the, 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 the cumulative data is increasing exponentially. The software is getting better at an exponential rate. Uh, I feel very confident predicting uh, autonomous robo taxis for Tesla next year. Not in, all not in all jurisdictions because we won't have regulatory approval everywhere, but I, I, I'm confident we will have at least regulatory approval somewhere literally next year. Um, so any customer will be able to add or remove their car to the Tesla network. So we expect this to operate um, it's sort of, it's sort of a, like a combination of maybe the Uber and Airbnb model. So if you own the car, you can add or subtract it to the Tesla network, and Tesla would uh, take uh, 25 or 30 percent of the revenue. Um, and, uh, and then in places where there aren't enough people sharing their cars, we would just have dedicated uh, Tesla vehicles. Um, so we'll sh we'll sh when you use the car, we'll show you our ride-sharing app. So you'll be able to, be able to summon the car from the parking lot, get in, and go for a drive. It's really simple. So you just take the same Tesla app that you currently have, we'll, just do, we'll just update the app and add a summon, summon Tesla or, or commit your car to the fleet. So it's either summon, summon your car or add, summon a Tesla or add, your, add or subtract your car to the fleet. You'll be able to do that from your phone. So we see um, potential for smoothing out the demand distribution curve um, and having the car operate at a much higher utility than a, a normal car would operate. So like, typically, the use of a car uh, is about 10 to 12 hours a week. So most people will drive um, one and a half to two hours a day, typically 10 to 12 hours a week of total driving. But if you have a, um, a car that can operate autonomously, then most likely you could probably, most likely you'd have that car operate for a, a third of the week or longer. So there are 168 hours in a week, so probably you've got something on the order of 55 to 60 hours a week of operation, maybe a bit longer. Um, so the, the fundamental utility of a vehicle increases by a, a factor of five. So you can look, look at this from a macroeconomic standpoint and say just, if, if this was like some, if we were operating some big simulation, if you could upgrade your simulation to increase the utility of cars by a factor of five, that would be a f massive increase in the um, economic efficiency of the simulation. Just gigantic. So um, we'll do Model 3 S, S3 and X as taxis, but um, we, we made an important change to our leases. So if you lease a Model 3, you don't have the option of buying it at the end of the lease. We want them back. If you buy the car, you can, keep, you, you can keep it, but if you lease it, you have to give it back. And as, as I said, where in any locations where there's not enough to, uh, supply for sharing, uh, we'll, Tesla will just make its own cars um, and add them to the network in that place. So the current cost of ro Model 3 robo-taxi is um, less than $38,000. We expect that number to improve over time. Um, and we're designing the cars. The cars currently being built are all designed for a million miles of operation. So the drive units are designed, for, uh, designed and tested and validated for a million, un million miles of operation. The current battery pack is about maybe 300 to 500,000 miles. Uh, the new battery pack that probably go into production next year is designed explicitly for a million miles of operation. The entire vehicle, battery pack inclusive, um, will well, it's designed to operate for a million miles with minimal maintenance. maintenance. So we'll actually be adjusting uh, tire design and uh, re really optimizing the car for a hyper-efficient robo-taxi. And at some point, you won't need steering wheels or pedals, and we'll just delete those. So as, as, as these things become less and less important, we'll just delete parts. Just They won't, they won't be there. Um, if you say, like, probably, 
two years from now, we, 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 we make a car that has no steering wheels and pedals. And if we need to accelerate that time, we can always just delete parts, easy. Um, yeah, probably, say a long term, three years, rubber taxis with, with eliminated parts. It maybe it ends up being $25,000 or less. And you want a, a super efficient car so that the electricity consumption is very low. So we're currently at four and a half miles per kilowatt hour, but we can, we'll improve that to five and beyond. And there's just really no, no company that has the full stack integration. We've got the, the vehicle design and manufacturing. We've got the computer hardware in-house. We've got the in-house software development um, the, and, and AI. And we've got by far the biggest fleet. It's extremely difficult, not impossible perhaps, but extremely difficult to catch up when Tesla has 100 times more um, miles per day than everyone else combined. This, this is, these, these today, this is the cost of running a gasoline car, or the, the average cost of running a car in the US this is taken from AAA. So it's currently about 62 cents a mile, um, you know, uh, 13 and a half thousand miles, 250 million vehicles, adds up to two trillion a year. Um, these are literally just taken from the AAA website. Um, the cost of ride sharing is, uh, according to Uber and Lyft, is two to three dollars a mile. Um, the cost to run a robo taxi, we think less than 18 cents a mile. And, and dropping. Like this, is cur this, is, this would be current. This is current cost. Future costs will be lower. If you say, what would be the probable gross profit from a single robo taxi? Um, we think probably something on the order of thirty thousand dollars per year, and we expect that we're, we're, we're literally designing we're, we're, we're designing the cars the same way that commercial semi trailer semi trucks are designed. Commercial semi trucks are all designed for a million mile life, and we're designing the cars for a million mile life as well. So in, in nominal dollars, that would be, you know, a little over three hundred thousand dollars over the course of eleven years. It might be higher. I think these consumptions are actually relatively conservative, and this assumes that 50% of the miles driven are, are there's nothing are, are not useful, so this is only at 50% utility. By the middle of next year, uh, we'll have over a million Tesla cars on the road with full self-driving hardware, feature complete, uh, at a reliability level that we would consider. Uh, that no one needs to pay attention. Meaning you could go to sleep in your, from our standpoint, if you fast forward a year, just a little, maybe a year, maybe a year and three months, uh, at, but next year for sure, we will have over a million robo taxis on the road. The fleet wakes up with an over the air update. That's all it takes. You say, what, what is the net present value of a, of a taxi? Probably on the order of a couple hundred thousand dollars. So buying a Model 3 is a good deal. <laughs> Any questions? In our own fleet, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I guess long term we have probably on the order of 10 million vehicles. Um, I mean, our production rate generally, if you look at our compound annual production rate since 2012, which is like the that's our first full year of Model, Model S production. We went from 23,000 vehicles produced in 2013 to uh, around 250,000 vehicles produced last year. So in the course of uh, five years, uh, we increased output by a factor of 10. I would expect that something similar occurs over the next five or six years. Um, as for sharing, sharing versus I don't know. The, the nice thing is that essentially customers are fronting us the money for the car. It's great. So um, in terms of the one thing is the snake charger. I'm curious about that. And ha -ha. also, um, how did you determine the pricing? It looks like you're undercutting the average Lyft or Uber ride by about 50%. So I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about the, the pricing strategy. 
Uh, sure. Uh, we expect the, the, the to, to uh, um, obviously solving solving for the snake charger is is, is pretty straightforward it's, from a vision prop standpoint. It's a, like a known situation. Any, any kind of known situation with with vision is like like a charge port. It's trivial. Um, so um, so yeah, the cars would just automatically park the, and automatically uh, plug in. Um, there would be no one, no human supervision required. Um, yeah. So, sorry, the other part was a oh, pricing. Uh, that we just threw some numbers on there. I mean, I think like definitely plug in whatever pricing you think makes sense. Uh, we just kind of randomly said, okay, maybe a dollar. Um, and, and the thing is, like, it's, it's there's like on the order of two billion cars and trucks in the world. So robo taxis will be in extremely high demand for a very long time. And from my observation thus far is that the, the auto industry is very slow to adapt. I mean, like I said, there's still not a car on the road that you can buy today that is as good as the Model S was in 2012. Um, so that suggests um, a pretty slow rate of adaptation for the car industry. Um, and so probably a dollar is conservative for the next 10 years because like people, People sort of think, like, like, there's like actually not enough appreciation for the difficulty of manufacturing. Manufacturing is insanely difficult. Um, but a lot of people I talk to think like, if you just have the right design, you can like instantly make as much of that thing as the world wants. This is not true. <laughs> um, it's extremely hard to design a, a new manufacturing system for new technology. Um, I, I mean. Audi's having major problems manufacturing the e-tron, and they are extremely good at manufacturing. And if they're having problems, what, are, what about others? Um, so the, you know, there's, there's on the order of two billion cars and trucks in the world, on the, on the order of about 100 million units per year of production capacity of vehicles, but, but only of the old design. Um, it will take a very long time to convert all of that to uh, full self-driving cars. And they really need to be electric because the cost of operation of a gasoline diesel car is much higher than an electric car. The, so uh, uh, any, 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 any robotax that isn't electric will absolutely not be competitive. Elon, it's uh, Colin Rush from Oppenheimer over here. Um, you know, obviously we appreciate that the customers are fronting some of the cash for this, this fleet getting built up, but it sounds like a, a massive balance sheet commitment from the organization over the course of time. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what that looks like, what your expectations are in terms of financing over the next, call it three years, three, four years, uh, for building up this fleet and, and starting to monetize it with, uh, with your, you know, customer base? Well, we're aiming to be, you know, approximately cash flow neutral uh, during the, 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 the fleet build-up phase, um, and then I would expect to be extremely cash flow positive once the robo taxis are enabled. Um, but I, I don't want to talk about financing rounds. It would be difficult to talk about financing rounds at, in this in this venue. But um, it, we'll, we'll, I think we'll make the right moves. We'll make, we'll, I think we'll make the moves you think you think we should make. Um, I have a question. If, if I'm Uber, why wouldn't I just buy all your cars? You know, why would I, I let you put me out of business? Uh, there's, a, there's a clause that we put into our cars, uh, I think it was about three or four years ago. They can only be used in the Tesla network. So, so even a private person, like if I go out and buy 10 Model 3s, I, can't, I can run it on the network. That's a business now, right? You're only allowed to use the Tesla network. Right, but if I use the Tesla network, in theory, I could run a car sharing robo taxi business with my 10 Model 3s. Yes, but it's like the App Store. The, 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 you, can only, you can add only add or remove them uh, through the Tesla network, um, and then Tesla gets revenue share. But, but similar to Airbnb, though, in that I have this home, my car, and now I can just rent them out. So I can make an extra income from owning multiple cars and just renting them out. Like, I have a Model 3. I aspire to get this Roadster here next when you build it, and I'm going to just rent my Model 3 out. Why would I give it back to you, you know? Um, I guess you could operate a rental car fleet, but I think this is very unwieldy. Yeah. I don't know. It seems easy. Okay. Try it. <laughs> 